Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Loving what we're going to do today. We've talked to her before and got so much insight on interior designs and what we can do to freshen up our living space or workspace and how her whole process works when she works with someone. Today, we're going to look at what she did for one of her most important clients, herself. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, she moved into a new place and had to redo some things in there, and we're going to take a look at that. And she's back with us. Sandy Schuster is here. How are you doing today? I'm good, Steve. How are you? Very well, very well. This is uh, this is unique because we get to get inside your head, not only further defining your style, but putting it into action. So before we right. get anywhere here as our professional of the year, how did this all begin? Now you, you, you have a new place as of how long ago? I moved in four weeks ago. Ooh, okay. This so is I'm, I'm just now, I'm having wallpaper installed. So if you hear my dogs bark, they're barking at the installer, but I wanted, um, you know, people always ask me, what's my design style and kind of has, as I've been going through decorating my home, I, I, I kind of nailed some things down. <laughs> And let's just say that your design style doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be that when you work with a client, it's what they're looking for. You know, sometimes a little of your influence may come in if they're good with that, but it's really about what what they want. And this time, this time it's about what you want. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's always about what the client likes, but you know, people always ask me. So I thought, well, let me just share what I've come up with. Yeah. So cool. All right. Let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, let me share my screen here. So, so yeah, a lot of people ask me, you know, what is my style? So I've come up with, I'm done. I'm not just one style. In fact, I'm probably other styles. But um, I, I'm Grandma Coastal, which is mixing new with the old. I love doing that. It also um, it involves a neutral palette, um, large uncovered windows, curated antique pieces. I'm also eclectic. Um, I love to mix patterns, textures, and colors. And then I'm also biophilic, where I like to incorporate really natural elements and plants into my design. So I thought I would just share just some things that I've done. You know, I've only lived here four weeks, but, you know, I'm the kind of person that I got to get my pictures hung up the second day I'm here. <laughs> I lo- This is so interesting what things are called here. Grandma Coastal uh, would have never came up with that title. Um, and biophilic. Um, that would be me. So I'm going to remember that one to use that one. And of course, eclectic and eclectic, you can define in many different ways. Uh, I know. I know. How do you, how do you feel about broad? Yeah. How do you feel about being the grandma coastal? Um, I love it. You know, this house is an old house and there's some old elements in it, but I've also mixed some real modern things into the mix. So cool. I don't, I don't mind being grandma coastal. I'm not a grandma, but (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a grandpa. Um, (laughs) Coastal, does that mean you're by the coast or that's just the name that's given to it? You know, I think it's the mixing of the natural elements in it. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Again, it's very broad, but um, yeah, I'd like to show you some examples. Please, let's do it. Okay. Let me see if I can get my screen to go forward. Okay. So the first um, element of Grandma Coastal is mixing traditional with new. This is not a picture of mine, but it's it's one that I found on Pinterest. I notice they have some really, you know, um, traditional chairs, but it's it's mixed in here with with the newer the ceiling. I mean, I don't know, just with modern vibes. And so this is actually my um, great room when you walk in. This is actually a table where I um, will see, be seeing my clients and showing them my designs. But the home itself is very traditional, but this table is very modern, and mm-hmm. so are the chairs. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's an example of mixing. Um, modern with the old and then obviously the old radiators here and then kind of a new looking table with a kind of um, mid-century modern lamp. It's funny how it all works because uh, the first thing I saw aside from that table and the chairs being modern was the radiators. I don't know why my brain goes to that (laughs) because I, I guess it defines uh, the, the, the age of the home or the, you know, the charm that goes in and the molding is is right. quite um impressive right yeah so and there's there's some biophilic in here you know the plant features and faces are actually biophilic as well 
I want to share what you uh, opened my eyes to in the past. Biophilic. So you have they have the plants on the table in a pitcher, looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also have it on the wall above the radiator to the right, whereby it's not an actual plant or not an artificial plant, but it's a representation of a plant. So therefore, we're still mixing in that that um, that fauna kind of feel. Right, right, right. And that's kind of a there's mirrored leaves on that. Yeah. So, so it doesn't have to yeah. actually be a plant, you know, to get right. that, that vibe. Right. And then Grandma Costa also, um, this is a, a picture from the internet, um, has a neutral color palette. So um, this is my entryway and it was a really dark color. So I painted it um, Soji White from Sherwin-Williams. I just love that color. Just made it more um, neutral, um, used a natural fiber in the area rug. Mm. And then the plants. I mean, this doesn't get a lot of light. So I use some artificial plants. A lot of people ask me that. Can you use artificial plants? Yes, you can. Sure. Um, but this is another kind of really, I, I made this look a little bit more neutral, but then I added in some eclectic feel with the patterns and um, textures in this scene. It's, this is a, even just this one entryway is a testament to how every little thing matters, right down to the pillows, right down to uh, <laughs> even the vase on the, on the, where the door is. Um, right. And you now I just noticed this, the panes on the door, uh, Interesting door, by the way. Yeah. You know, those, that's um, actually wallpaper um, for windows on the door. So it gives me some privacy, but I can still see out and see the, and the sun the light comes in. I di- all, all I'm thinking is contact paper. So they call it wallpaper for, <laughs> for, for doors or windows? For windows. Wow. Wow. <laughs> see, you learned something. Cool. Yeah, really yeah. nice. Very inviting. Yeah. Yeah. So another element of Grandma Costa is large uncovered windows. And um, I think that's maybe an element of, of older homes, but this is, this is in my home here. I've got three big windows and I have shades that I can pull down, but I just, I left them open. I didn't put any window treatments on them. And again, um, you know, the, the molding and everything you can still see. Yeah. And again, my biophilia, this is a Southern exposure so my plants do really well here. It's another picture of it. Wow. Again, the molding, um, you inherited something very beautiful. <laughs> and I'm seeing, and I don't know if it's the way the light is playing it, but there's a very slight texture on the walls. What's what's going on there? That's a, a older pattern um, that they used in Victorian homes and um, every time I have drywall work done, I've, I've watched them do it. They throw a rag at it, um, in a certain way and an angle. Um, and it, it's a really beautiful texture. In fact, to put wallpaper up, I'm having my walls sealed now to make them smooth so we can put the wallpaper on. But yeah, that's just kind of the texture of this older home. So are you putting wallpaper on these walls or uh, other walls? No, I'm putting wallpaper that goes up my staircase and in my bedroom. And they have that texture throughout the home, right? Yeah. So give me that again, because I, 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 I love learning how things are done. So they take a rag. What's on the rag as they throw it on the, uh, on the drywall? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if they have a. It's a wet rag, but they throw it a certain way, an angle. It's really, a, it's really an artistic. Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it, it it is. And it's not like overdone. It's just a little bit of texture going on there. Interesting. Wow. Right. And, and I would imagine, you know, if you want a, a smooth wall for wallpaper to um, to sand that down, doesn't seem like it would be a lot of work. They actually put, they skim it with a plaster so there's no sanding and dust. So they just oh. kind of fill it in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Even easier. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So another element of Grandma Coastal is adding curated antique pieces. And I'm, I love to shop um, thrift stores, antique stores. Um, so this is in my kitchen. And I've, I, I found this, I've had this cabinet for many years, but, and I painted it. And so that's, that's really fun bringing that into this home. And then the light fixture, I found this at an antique store. It's really beautiful. And I paid less for it than I would um, if I would have bought it brand new. It cost me a little bit more to have it installed, but um, 
Again, and then the older table, I actually found that at the Goodwill. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, but, um, and then um, this little turtle table. So these are some things that I've incorporated, even though I've got some modern things in my style. I have also have incorporated some antiques into my style. Uh, let's go back to that Goodwill table. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for chairs, by the way. <laughs> It's a testament to what you can find if you shop around. Uh, if you told me that you you bought that at uh, you know one of your distributors that you work with, and uh, I would have I would have believed that as well. Like it's a it's a beautiful table. <laughs> you never know yeah. what you're going to find. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember yeah, the chairs that I got to go with it? They're upholstered and they they've kind of got a real traditional look to them. Okay, so to confirm, there were chairs that went with that but you're having them reupholstered am i hearing that actually right? i'm buying buying brand new custom upholstered chairs oh gotcha gotcha okay yeah. that yeah. um gotta ask that table what um what, what did that go for at the goodwill <laughs> maybe 75 dollars, maybe 50 i've had it for a while i had it in my garage and i thought i'm gonna bring it out um i did paint the top um, wow. To go with the the color scheme in here, but really nice, yeah. yeah. It, it it perfectly fits, and it seems to be the perfect size too. Right, right. Mm. Okay, so then eclectic style, um, mixing patterns and textures. I mean, this is a real eclectic. I mean, people. Um, and this isn't my photo. Again, this, I found this on the internet. Um, this is another example of eclectic style mixing patterns. And then this is in my um, front room. Again, <laughs> lots. There's lots of pattern in here. But I purposely did the um, the backing and the shelving to kind of mirror the, the this um, design in my draperies. Um, I love this coffee table with the pattern in it. Um, it's easy to move around. It's lightweight. The pattern in the area rug. And then I have lots of um, pattern and color in my um, pillows. What so I, I get, so yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what I just find interesting is if you put all that stuff in front of me, but not placed her on the wall i would look at it and say what is she doing <laughs> look at that pattern then we got this one then we got that one then we got this one for me it would be like pattern overload seeing it here it's beautiful it all it it, it wonderfully works yeah. together it's just fun classy um it's got a vibe got some movement to it it's not static really really nice yeah so um you know i've so grandma coastal eclectic and biophilic so that i kind of I guess as I'm looking around my home, that's kind of what I'm combining. And then, you know, the Grandma Coastal includes the traditional. Like the wallpaper I'm putting up the stairs is a damask print, which is very traditional. So anyway, I just thought it would be, would be fun to share Yeah, um, some of the things well, that I've done. <laughs> that is, uh, the, I feel like, um, you know, we, we've got a privilege here going behind the scenes to see, you know, what makes you tick. <laughs> Because uh, we've seen some of the great stuff you've done for others, what's what's left in your home? What's on your your action to do list? Um, the wallpaper. I'm still waiting for furniture in my bedroom, furniture in my office. I'm still it's still not quite put together. Um, the dining room chairs, um, uh, some backsplash in my kitchen, but mostly um, I feel like it's it's a place where I can bring clients and it's. It's put together. Of course, I will keep changing stuff and, and adding to my home. I really, I'll see something and I'll say, oh, I, that would look better instead of what I have. And yeah, but I think your space, um, it, just making it yours is, is really fun. Is that a challenge for you where you, when you're shopping, you have to push yourself away? <laughs> you know, where you see something, it's like, <laughs> do I really need it? But I, it would look really nice. But, I, you know, do you have to weigh the options before you buy it? Um. Sometimes I guess it's been really fun moving in because there's a lot of things I needed. So I was just like, that works. I'm going to get, I'm going to get that. Um, but yeah, then I'm, I'm going to have to pace myself. Hmm. Was your style <laughs> similar in your last place? Um, no, I had a little bit more of a modern mid-century vibe. Um, the home was a little bit different. It was, it was a little Spanish um, home. So the ceilings weren't as high. Um there wasn't all the, it had really great molding on the floor, but not, it was, it was just different, but, but I, I, my style also changes. So, but I think I'm mostly, I trend towards traditional and tra more transitional. I love to mix the old with the new. 
So would you say that this place now is more you? Um, yeah, it's it's definitely me. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. your last place had a Spanish influence. You know, that's all good, but you know, there's only so much you can do. You have to carry on that uh, that influence. You can't just completely abandon it because it might not look right, you know, adding something else in. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and this home was also bigger. My other home was really small. Okay. Oh, all right. Can I ask why Why you decided to move? Oh, it's kind of a long story. I, I, I was in this little house because I wanted to expand it and getting the permitting through the city of Denver um, was taking way too long. So I, I actually, this, this is a home I've had for many years and I was renting it out and okay. I just decided I want to move, I want to move back into it and really make it. Oh, cool. Okay. Make it a place where I can bring my clients. The permit thing, I'm in the New York area. I get it. <laughs> yeah, they find every little thing that you got to do before they'll even consider approving yeah. it. Yeah, uh, unless you want to throw the money, and I don't mean bribing or anything. Um, I remember <laughs> selling two houses back where I, when I bought the house, the family there had a shed and it was tucked away in the corner. You can't have the shed in the corner, according to the covenants. So before I moved in, they put the shed on PVC pipe and rolled it to the center of the lawn. It was just sitting there. So I was able to move in, no issues, permits, whatever. So I got a bunch you of- it back? With a bunch of friends and pizza <laughs> and pushed it back. And there it stayed. There was no issues whatsoever until I wanted to sell. And I didn't want to do the whole thing over again. So I went to the town, we had to go to one of those town meetings and stand up there and say, you know, yes, I want to, I want to get a- um, a permit of variance to keep it where it is or put it where it is $500 and you're done. So yeah, it's a, it's a process. It's always a process. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it changes all the time. It, it doesn't stay the same. Yeah. Fortunately you only deal with a little bit of that. I would imagine in your work where it's not like you're doing construction, you might make recommendations of changes and things like that. Um, did you find buying these items for this place was any more challenging than when you're working with uh, with the client? Well, a lot of the items I'm I'm buying bought bought and have I'm buying are from my suppliers that I'm very familiar with. Mm -hmm. So you know, I've always have had a sense like you know when when I move into a bigger place, that's what I'm going to put in my space. So I, I use my suppliers, which made it really easy um, because you know I do a lot of shopping for my clients and I shop for myself while I'm in the process. <laughs> It goes back to the previous question where <laughs> we have to, you know, it's, it's, it's like the kid in the candy store. You're going to push yourself back like, no, 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 I don't need that pillow. <laughs> yes, you want that pillow. No, I don't really need that pillow. Um, but it's, it must be fun having an eye for that kind of stuff where you can see like that, like a table at Goodwill. I'm getting that table. I'll be using that at some point and you can't mm -hmm. pass up the price. I mean, my gosh. Um, have you bought stuff off of places like, Facebook Marketplace? No, but I, I've sold a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace. You don't get top dollar for it. But, you know, I have some friends that have bought some really cool cabinets and have painted them, repurposed them into um, Kitchen Island. So, yeah, you can you can find a lot of yeah. nice things. Yeah, there. you know, it's you don't have to spend a lot. It depends on what you're buying. Uh, my claim to fame is um, is artificial plants. Anytime I'm looking for something, it's always been on Facebook Marketplace. Twenty dollars here, thirty there. I've gotten, and they're all beautiful. Maybe a little bit of dust, wipe them down, like like it's new. It's good to know. Oh my god, it's good to know. Yeah, I've even gotten. I had a in my last place a very high ceiling, and I got a twelve foot plant, like ten foot plant, artificial. Um, I think maybe I paid thirty five dollars for it. The biggest challenge was getting, yeah. getting it home. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are expensive. Oh my yeah. God. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm intrigued about the way you describe different styles. What are some of the, can you give a few like grandma coastal kind of makes me laugh, but it, it describes exactly what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other names for some of the other styles that are out there? Um, boho, um, contemporary, modern, um, so modern vintage, modern vintage is another name for grandma coastal. I guess Grandma Coastal really just sticks out. Maybe that's why I use that term. Um, there's a style where you use really dark, moody tones. I forget what that's called. Avant-garde. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. What about, what about Farmhouse? I hear that one turn around a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, 
it's not as popular as it used to be, but it's still, it's still, um, it makes sense in some, in some places. And it's, it's a, it's a style too, that I, I love as well. Hmm. Is... In fact, some of my elements could be kind of farmhousey. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking back, I could see that, you know, um, what about minimalistic, you know, simple, is that still a thing? I know that was kind of big a couple of years ago. Um, I have clients that, that want that. In fact, they use that word a lot. Um, and I, you know, sometimes they mean different things by it. Sometimes they mean, I really want to make sure that it fits in my space better and it's not cutting off my flow of traffic. Some of them, that means minimal artwork or if the artwork's on the wall, it needs to be maybe one thing real simple. Um, yeah. Hmm. People are still using that. I'm clean, a clean, a clean look. There's there's so many ways to describe style. It's just like your your clothing. Um, there's just so many different styles and yeah, Art Deco. Um, I find that when I moved, it was it turned into minimalistic because I just purged. <laughs> You didn't have anything. <laughs> kind of like, yeah. It's uh, you know, I got rid of stuff, put stuff in storage, but I started from the ground up, which I guess was better because you realize that you don't really need all this stuff around. Um, yeah, you know, and, and whatever supports you. You know, I have pictures and things like that. Some art, don't overdo it. Probably could use a little bit more. Um, but the point that I, I found after going from a house to a smaller place, big house to a smaller place, was you don't need a lot of stuff. You know, when you really right. scale it I down. Think you need the things to help you live in your space the best you can. But after that, if, if it's if it's not really using it, then you shouldn't have it. Yeah, yeah. Or put it in storage and or wherever. You know, storage could be your garage. And slowly, right. slowly bring it back. You know, hmm, I miss that. I miss that picture on the mantle. Oh, yeah, we still have that. Let's go get that. Yeah. Put it up there. And um, oh, it was very cool looking at this in a different direction as we did today. Um, and thank you for showing us uh, your place. How, yeah. do we, how do we connect with you? How do we find you, Sandy? Um, you can see my website at roomsbysandy.decoratingden.com or my email is schuster at decoratingden.com or my phone number, 720-885-0019. And I would imagine you're available even if somebody just wants to have a quick conversation to see if... If what they're looking for is what you do, and maybe if it's a right fit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Sandy, thanks for being yeah. here today. Thanks for showing uh, your personal side. <laughs> it was very cool. Yeah. Thanks. It was fun. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. <laughs> Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course, my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat, aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing? I think I have it right. <laughs> Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat. Or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.